Hey everybody, welcome to Thirsty Thursday, Thirsty Thursday Live with Cape May Brewing Company. It's your source, your once a month source for everything that's going on at CNBC, locally and abroad. And uh, tonight we have two people here from Cape May Brewing Company. First off, I'm John Cashew. I'm the founder and editor in chief of South Jersey Beer Scene, sjbeerscene.com. We bring you all the beer news here around the shore from the bridges to the beaches. That's what we say. And here, returning guest, our friend Chris Costello, the GM of the CNBC Tasting Room here in Cape May. How you doing, Chris? Good. How's everyone doing on this beautiful Thursday evening out here? It is. A, it was a lovely day. It was a <laughs> lovely day here in South Jersey and the Delaware Valley for everyone, I'm sure. Uh, went from ice to slush in literally three hours down here in Cape May County. I know some of y'all don't have that, but we're doing good down here now, I think. And uh, right to his left is our friend Scott McIntyre, who is the Delaware and Pennsylvania sales manager. That's right. I said Delaware and Pennsylvania sales manager yes. for Cape Brewing Company. How you doing, Scott? I'm good. What's going on, everyone? Excited to be on. Yeah, it's great to have you here. It's always good to have a newbie, right, Chris? Now that you're a veteran of many shows. <laughs> Take so, a break yeah. from uh, from shoveling some snow and ice, so it's all good. <laughs> so, you know, it's cold here today, but, you know, it's, it's getting towards the end of February. We're going into spring, so we want to start talking about the nice, new, springy things that are happening at CNBC this month. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, we want to talk to Chris about the tasting room. So you're the guy that puts these protocols in place. So now that the governor Murphy allows 35% to be in the tasting room, um, tell us what you're doing over there to keep it safe for everybody. And as you, as the governor slowly lets more people into the brewery. Um, so so it's really, it's really uh, fun and exciting how like much the team gets involved when we got this announcement out there. Actually, before I got the official email from the state, um, one of our supervisors in the tasting room, Danielle had uh, sent a message out to the team that it was going up. So within 45 minutes, everyone that was working that day, we already had a plan in place how we could fit in another 20 seats or four tables uh, in the tasting room. And everything that morning was complete from start to finish in under an hour. Uh, we had our warehouse team bring over the rest of the seats. So uh, we've been able to get, like I said, four more tables in, uh, up to 20 more seats in there that, you know, that gives us to the 35% capacity. Um, and it's really helped a lot, especially in, you know, this past January and February. Um, the beer garden's gotten a little bit, you know, tougher to want to be outside in this freezing yeah. cold. And we'll see, you know, people come in and they'll be like, no, we can bear it. And then you have one beer and it's like, okay, this is, the beer is great, but the, the uh, beer jacket isn't quite kicking in. So it's, it's really um, crazy to see how important just, you know, every percentage that we can get increase that allows that many more people to safely come in uh, and sit down, be warm and have a beer and enjoy, you know, the best of times that they can right now. Yeah. And that's one of the great things about uh, from doing these broadcasts and knowing a lot of the people that work there is how you guys can get together quickly and pivot and get something done as a team from all your departments. And that's one of the things that makes you guys so fun to work with is that, Every person I talk to there is a as a part of the bigger picture, and that's not just their job. And to be able to turn things around that quick is awesome. And to do it safely, and to continue to do your safety protocols and move people in and out safely is a great thing. So, very very cool. So, tasting room hours for everybody, just in case you know, right up the top here, you're open when during the week. Uh, we're open every day, twelve to seven. Uh, we typically do, especially on the weekends, our last seating at about 6.30. Uh, really, Friday, Saturdays, we're, we're on a wait for most of the day. So we just, you know, like to do our best to manage expectation. Uh, we do our last call at 6.45, but uh, the boutique is currently open. Um, so we can get up to 10 people in there at a time to go in and shop. So, you know, even if you don't have time to wait in line to sit down and have a beer, uh, you know, you can get it. Most of our packaged goods, uh, we have most of our brews available there. And if not, we can do a lot of things in the growler as well. Uh, you know, we're always willing to give anybody uh, a sample with if they want to try something before they buy it. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, we're, we're always working to try and improve the, the COVID uh, experience. I guess that's the disappointing way to put it. Uh, but we're mm -hmm. always trying to add new and different things in there. Um, we got a, a thing coming out very soon that people start hearing about. We're going to... Um, Work on doing something like Shoprite, Walmart, all those other people do, where we're going to bring beer right to your right to your car, so you don't have to get out. You can, uh, we can hand deliver that, and you know, stay tuned for more details. They'll they'll come out through our newsletter and our uh, different social media channels on how that's going to work for us. So that, that's really cool that you guys. There's always something going on there. Every time you go, there's something different. Now, it brings me to you, Scott. So one of the things, first of all, 
Cape May is no longer the little local brewery that we all know and love. It still is, but there's much more to Cape May than, than what, you know, you think of, you come down here to the brewery. We, you now have beer in Delaware and Pennsylvania. So tell yes. me what does a sales rep do to go sell beer in Delaware and Pennsylvania? How, how, <laughs> well, how did it go? Let, let's just put it this way. How does it start when you go out and, and, and talk about Cape May beer? Cause people know so, it's a regional I, beer. Yeah. So, well, I guess I'll back up a little bit. We, um, mm. we launched Delaware literally in Mar March, 2020. So not that anything crazy happened in March, 2020, that would kind of throw things for a loop a little bit, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's funny when you launch a market, there's certain things that you really want to attack and do samplings, tastings, beer dinners, beer festivals, things with people. And, um, you know, obviously this past year, that was a little bit of a challenge, but, um, I think you know, really other than kind of staying safe in the market, um, you know, you're, we're out doing as much as we possibly can kind of promoting, um, talking about what's coming, especially this spring as we're sitting here on this miserable, icy, snowy day here. Um, it's not nice. And yeah. And, and some of the beers we have coming are just, I don't know, if you take a sip of it and close your eyes, you're, it, it takes you to summer pretty quick. So we're excited about that. Yeah. And, uh, I can't, May always has a lot of different beers in your tool bag to appeal to a wide range of people. And now you have something even more, that you can go out and and talk to people about and uh i think our friend chris has a little bit of a prop there that we're talking about cape may craft hard seltzer um which is a really really cool cool thing and you know for those of you who don't know seltzer is something else that can be made here in the, i probably everywhere in the brewery and uh it's something different and as a beer writer, there it is. As a beer writer, as somebody, I'm going to share my screen from your screen and show you. Um, you know, this is this is the stuff here, guys. Um, you know, grapefruit, black cherry, watermelon, mango. Uh, there is a variety pack that's going to be available out for distribution. And Chris, you're going to have cases available at the tasting room here in Cape May. Um, yeah, so we're going to have um, in our standard, you know, six pack style, we'll have each one of these variants, uh, but we're also going to have a variety case where we're going to have all these, you know, ready to go for you uh, so that the people are able to come in and, and try all, all four varieties that we have out there. That's a really cool thing. So one of the things as a beer writer, somebody has been writing about beer when I would go to particularly places that I would say, well, what do you do if people don't drink beer? At one point, people were like, well, we get beer, we might dump some vanilla in it. And I know that you guys would never do this in, in Cape May, like to try and get somebody else here. And we we're a big wine region down here in South Jersey. So it was like, the husband would be like, okay, we're going to go to Cape May Brewery, then I'm going to take you down to Cape May Winery, you know, and, you know, kind of do it. So having this seltzer, you guys always had soda too, but having this seltzer is just such another cool thing, you know, to for the destination. So, you know, talk a little bit about, um, you know, how it came about and, you know, that kind of thing. That's just some general information on the product other than the flavor. So tell me about manufacturing process. Do you guys have a handle on how that works? Um, not too, too much on, you know, the manufacturing side. I mean, I have the an understanding of it, but I can give a, a background more on the story of Good. how right. Kate May Seltzer came about. You know, a lot of things we, we start talking about it in the tasting room and, um, you know, it was no, no shock to us when we saw the takeoff that like White Claw truly those kinds of brands did that, you know, there was certainly a market and seltzers were coming up. Uh, and another driving factor, John, you talked about it is we have a lot of people that come through uh, down to Cape May on tourism that, you know, one or two people are beer drinkers. So they come to the brewery and we always get the question, do you have wine? Do you have seltzer? Do you have cider? And, you know, we don't like saying no to everyone. We want to be able to have an option for everybody. Um, so we started testing out some draft seltzers in the tasting room, uh, which is really nice because they're also gluten free. Um, so mm -hmm. anybody that has like celiacs or uh, gluten intolerance, this is an option to come to a brewery where like gluten is everywhere. So it's a it's a really good opportunity for them. Uh, and we had great reviews on uh, people enjoying the seltzer. Uh, so obviously the next progression was to talk about how can we get this in package? Uh, you know, and then Scott and his team are like, hey, you got gold over there. You can't just hide it in the tasting room. You got to share it with everybody. It, it, it's funny, like just to piggyback off that, it's funny because um, like, you know, when you're out in the market, you're talking to people about seltzer and what's coming and things like that it's such a hot category and people, you know, the first thing people say is, Oh, are, are you guys doing a new seltzer? And the answer is like, yes and no, because we've had a seltzer at the tasting room for a while. And it, 
it went really, really well. And it's been going really well. I think it's more of, you know, we're excited to take that and make it more accessible to people in the tri-state area where they can go kind of around the corner to grab it um, instead of just being able to enjoy it at the tasting room. So, you know, that's really exciting too. And the other thing that's cool, obviously your packaging is always right spot on that fits with the brand, reminds you of the shore when you see it. Um, we find that consumers are more likely to buy a local product, especially when they're visiting that area. And, you know, there's a few out there from, from some other breweries, but to ha be able to have something else on the shelf um, to keep, we don't, you know, we love all companies, but to keep people from buying a big conglomerate like White Claws um, stuff to buy something local, it really just is another added revenue stream to the brewery and uh, to be able to expand like you have been doing over the last couple of years. So I haven't had the chance to taste it yet, um, but I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not a seltzer guy, um, but I find that the more that I drink them now, now I drink, I don't drink any diet soda or any soda. Now I'm drinking seltzers all the time. And I'm like, now I can, it's great. So that's a really, really it's a nice change up. To have. It is. It's cool. Yeah. Especially I can see it coming in the summer. Um, you know, when you just want, you're out mowing the lawn, you just need something wet and you just want to have a little bit. So enough where the lawn's still cut right, but not too much where the lawnmower <laughs> does end up in the pool. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. So cool. So uh, will this be available in Delaware as well? Is this something you're going to have out there in Delaware and Philly? Yes. Yeah, so it, it's going to be available in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, in, and Delaware um, starting March 1st. So right around the corner. Um, super excited. Um, you know, and again, to piggyback off of what Chris said, it's, you know, we use real fruit juice, uh, pure cane sugar in it, gluten-free, 97 calories, um, you know, and, and it's going to be in a 12 pack variety for out for distribution. It's going to be in a 12 pack variety pack only. And you should see it at around 1999, give or take, you know, yeah, that's a good price on what too. market you're in. Yeah, exactly. That was really important to us, making sure that we could deliver, um, a true craft brand, but without kind of breaking the bank for people. Cause you know, the, some of them are pretty expensive. Yes, they are at four and a half percent alcohol which is a nice, a nice little place where you need to be. I think for that kind of product is great. I, I think I saw some sort of drinking apparatus move up into the view there, Chris, that I don't have. So what do you got there? <laughs> well, you know, every time I come on with you, I like to bring something new from the, uh, from the boutique that we have in there. So um, this is a special limited edition um, glass that we have. Uh, we only have about around 300 that we're selling in the tasting room this year. Uh, and these are one of those glasses that I would recommend uh, if you buy it at the tasting room, you'd want to bring it back with you on every visit to the tasting room. Um, I think there's some people out there that don't know what I'm referring to on that. So, you know, we're we're getting low on our inventory. So if it's something that you're looking to buy every year, uh, it's definitely something to come in and get. Uh, and we put a little fun little ode on this one to our anniversary. So uh, we are coming up well, we're in our 10th anniversary year. So we put a little ode on the back to uh, a logo some people might recognize. Uh, yeah. Really just kind of. The Remember OG. where roots came from that we're, we're New Jersey proud and we always will be. I was drinking out of one of those old uh, Cape May Brewing Company uh, original glasses. So they they had to give me an updated version of that. And tonight I'm not drinking tonight because I'm working after this. But I mean, um, I have the newer one and I have the older one. That's a great logo. I love how you guys bring that stuff back into your merchandise and, you know, to remember, oh, I was there then. So that's really, really cool. And it's 10 years. Yeah. I'm crazy when you're having fun. That is craziness. Um, so when you're now, I'm going to go cut back to Scott real quick. So you're, you know, we have some spring releases coming up and they're some of the, you know, the hot beers that Kate May sells. And yes. we talked about them. So when you go over to, this is always curious to me, when you go over to Delaware, the liquor store owners, now not everybody's a craft beer guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all think everybody is because that's the circle we run in. How is Cape May received when you go across the bridge there or across the ferry? It, it's funny. I mean, that was, you know, that was one of the coolest parts about launching that market in general was kind of seeing, you know, how well do people really know Cape May? Is it something that they consider to be local or is it something that they view as, oh, that's in New Jersey, mm -hmm. not really Delaware? Um, and it's been received really, really well. It's, it's funny how many, you know, both customers and um, you know, retail retailers and, and restaurant owners too are say to me like, oh, we we're so excited that you're here. We've been waiting to have your beer in this market for so long. So it's it's really, really exciting. And I kind of joke when I'm down at the Delaware beaches that, 
you know, when you're in Lewis, I, I kind of turn around and I'm like, you know, put a bridge right there. We're 17 miles that way. So we're about <laughs> as local as it really gets. Um, you know, so it's been really, really well received. And, you know, we're, we're looking forward to some new stuff in 2021 and, you know, continuing to grow and, you know, do some of the so, more fun sides. So if you're in Delaware and Pennsylvania, the best way to get the beer over there, if you don't see it, is to ask for it. Yes. If you ask for a beer and that owner may not have any clue because he's a wine guy or a liquor guy, he might not have any clue. So for you, for our friends over there in Pennsylvania and Delaware that are looking to save a trip across the bridge or across the boat to get your mm -hmm. Cape May uh, drink of choice, ask for it. Yes. And uh, when people ask for it, they will definitely start uh, start doing it. Are you guys on available as, on draft as well? Well, we're talking in a in a regular world. Are you going to be available yeah. on draft in some places? Yes, too? absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, with with some of the challenges last year, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, it, it wasn't as widely accessible as you know due to things sure. out of obviously everybody's control. But um, yeah, absolutely, we're on drafted. You know, in various locations all over the state. So go go into your your favorite bar or restaurant and. And ask for an IPA or, or some always ready or something. Yeah, and um, a couple of things. I was I was doing some work for this, Chris, and you guys snuck out a couple of releases, at least one, since we were on last time, and that was the uh, grape good good. I think it was, or do you had? Maybe yeah, we've had um, we've had a busy busy February actually. So uh, a couple weeks ago, we came out with uh, chocolate covered strawberry milkshake IPA, which right. yeah. uh, have fun saying that 10 times fast. Um, <laughs> but you know, that beer also went out for distribution, which has been like really well received. Uh, and then this past weekend we had a, uh, a double release, uh, a little bit of a play on Valentine's day. We did sweet and sour. So we released that grape good, good, um, mm. which is a, you know, it's funny. I, I say this with beer. It's our grown-up version of the Perp, which was a draft variety beer that we've had in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a little higher ABV Shandy version that we came out with. Uh, we also came out with Key Lime Corrosion uh, last weekend in the tasting room, uh, which I know Scott knows will be hitting um, yes. Philadelphia and the rest of New Jersey and Delaware uh, in the coming. Uh, I think it's next week. I believe that goes out. Yeah. So it it literally it it just pulled into our wholesalers today. So it will be available in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware starting on Monday. So and that's we'll one of the oh, that's yeah. one of the one of the beers the the corrosion beers are some of the ones that we get asked the most. I think from people out there, hey, one of the corrosion beers coming back out well, again. It, it it's funny because when you, you know and we're out in the trade and you see kind of you know all the releases that we have. A sour IPA was kind of a little bit of a missing link for us. There's so many people who I'm out there like, hey, you know, do you guys have a sour? And I'm like, at the tasting room, yeah, we do. And and this year we're we're really excited to kind of to, to have a sour that really fills out and rounds out our portfolio to you know to be out in trade. Yeah, and it's uh it's cool. I lo I love what you guys do. I'm just gonna try and find the. Uh, I did have some stuff on here, and and this is a. Uh, do you have any of that uh, chocolate covered strawberry milkshake still hanging out down there? I do still have some of that hanging out. And I mean, that is, uh, that's the one I, I know that we had a lot of people that were talking about this on our stream and on our page. Um, the can is cool. And I bet you, I haven't had a chance to taste it yet, but we're hearing good things, seeing good things on the dreaded untapped uh, about it. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually, you know, people are taking a look at it and uh, liking it. Yeah, I now, think we, we hit the nail on the head with what we were trying to do with that beer. Uh, like for me, like on the nose, I get a lot of the chocolate. Um, on the first hit, that's where the strawberry pulls through. But on the finish, it kind of finishes with that chocolate aftertaste, uh, which really just complements the beer really nicely. It's a nice uh, dessert beer. You know, if you forgot about Valentine's Day last weekend, uh, you know, I think this is an excellent beer that you can kind of recover that with. And I'm sorry, honey, here you go. And I think you know, beer solves most problems. And I think that uh, it can mend a broken relationship too. I That's agree with that. It is the cause and the solution for all of the world's problems. <laughs> and, yeah. and in um, Pennsylvania, that beer is going to be released starting on Monday. So it hasn't been released yet. So look for it next week um, out at your favorite beer distributor or um, bar restaurant. And here's uh, what the can of Key Lime Corrosion looks like as they talked about this coming out later. And this is a really good beer, the Corrosion Series. Um, I'm going to sound like a fanboy. Really done well. One of my favorite things that you guys put out, uh, you know, that and your barrel age stuff to me 
are the things that I, I like it all, but I love the what you guys do with the thoughtfulness that goes into your product and key lime corrosion is definitely something like you don't see anywhere else. And I think like for me, the key lime corrosion um, has always had a special place in my heart before I started um, with the brewery uh, corrosion. The, the original corrosion was one of my favorite beers that I could get. Um, and shortly after I joined the company, that's when we decided to put it in the vault for a little bit. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things, you know, we hear people talk about it. And uh, we did that last year as a um, tasting room only release, the key lime corrosion. And, you know, people loved it. Uh, so we were able to, you know, we went to our meeting. We're like, hey, this is what they want. Let's give the fans what they want. Uh, so we found a way to scale that up and bring it out to the wholesale. Well, speaking of fans, we have a lot of comments going on here, but the conversation has been so lively that the host here, that being me, has uh, has a stop doing. So Daniel Fulgenzio, can you guys start shipping the Western PA? They miss the beer so much. Hey, look, it's I'm not going to speak on behalf of them, but this is a slow burn as things move. You know, ultimately, I'm sure that you guys have bigger plans. But uh, for now, at least we cut the driving down distance down a little bit, Daniel. You can come to the Eastern PA and not have to cross the bridge. So we're getting there. I was gonna say, if you can make it to Lancaster County, you're you're good. You're in good shape. But I got our friend Kelsey from saying hi from Philadelphia, and I'm sure she's happy that there's some beer available up there. And uh, uh, we got a friend of Scott. We got Beth Sankey Rooney saying, "Hey, Scott from Maryland." I mean, it's gonna be flooded. Guy. I know it's gonna be flooded with uh, some some people, but we'll see. So, uh, Danielle Christine, she makes a good point here. She loves how organized your go to uh, your pickup window is how you can order, get there, and it's done. So it just speaks to, uh, you know, this is your baby, Chris, how this happens here when you guys do the, the takeout. So how does one go about doing the online ordering and the takeout? What's the process? Uh, is there online checkout? Do you pay there? How does that all work? Yeah, so um, any package good that is available in the tasting room, uh, we make available for online order uh, for pickup at the tasting room. Um, if we have a special release coming out, we'll usually release it on our website for pre-order a few days in advance. Um, and I think one really um, cool thing that's come out of all of this is the pre-ordering. Uh, you know, before when we would release like the Bog, Crush, and a lot of these other big beers, you know, people would drive down and they would wait in line. And unfortunately, sometimes we would sell out before somebody was able to purchase it. And like, you know, it truly broke my heart when somebody would come up to me and be like, I drove two hours to come down here and get this beer and you're telling me it sold out. And it's like, it's a compliment because, you know, so many people loved the beer, but also it breaks your heart. because like, you know, you want to give everybody what they want. Um, so this has been a really nice opportunity for us to extend that to those that can always come down or drive right down. And, you know, we, we ask that you, you know, try to pick up your order within 48 hours. This way we are able to turn our storage over. Um, yeah, but you place that order, come in, pick it up, and don't don't be uh, hesitant to throw a little merchandise or whatever else you want in that order. We'll make sure we hold everything and have it ready for you when you come in. Uh, we have a question from Eric. Uh, I'm going to burn her. Uh, have you seen a spike from the local purists since Sam sold to Boston? Will you look forward to becoming uh, the OG independent? I don't know if this is your pay grade or not, guys, but how do you how do you speak to that? I, I, I think I'm going to answer as somebody who sees the beer market since that has gone on, because I don't want to put you guys in the corner there. I think um, the way Sam sold to that business was a natural direction of where Sam was going to build his business. That's just my opinion. And I don't care how much of a purist you are. If somebody's going to write you a $70 million check, it's pretty hard to say no. So um, for Kate May, one thing that's always been great about Kate May is you build locally and you're building your footprint out slowly and deliberately so the people that are here don't get left behind and saying, oh, I just had to ship all my beer to Philly to meet that demand and I don't have anything down here in South Jersey. So I think that in the beginning, there was a little bit of backlash against dogfish and that kind of thing. But I do think that after the immediate takedown of Sam, I think things have kind of normalized because I think the biggest thing we people were worried about. Kate May's gotten a little bigger. Am I going to ever see corrosion again? Kate May's got a little bit bigger. They're just going to flood it with 22 IPAs. And as you've gotten bigger, you've not done that. You've actually spread your wings a little bit and added a bunch of different varieties. And I think that's what people were scared about. I don't know if you care to comment. I know that's not something that really, but I mean, I think that an answer to the question, I think that craft beer is huge. Um, people have certainly flocked to it. Seltzers make up 18% of the market now. So to move that, it's just a natural progression. And to keep it local, it's awesome. So 
I'll yeah, keep I, them off of that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll just I say, say, okay, Scott. Oh, no, I was going to say, I, we're, we're incredibly committed to being, you know, a local brewery and, and really investing in the markets that we're in right now. And, um, you know, continuing to grow those relationships that we have in the tri-state area too. I mean, I had kind of touched a little bit on launching Delaware and, and everything that goes along with that is that we're excited for for this year coming up in 2021 to be able to do certain things to really invest time in the market to do beer festivals and beer dinners and things like that that maybe we couldn't have done last year so um yeah yeah we're all hopeful yes i, mean, finger, I say that fingers crossed hopefully by the summer so yeah we're hope we're, everybody's hopeful that i think uh any little bit of safe entertainment that we can is going to be awesome so that brings us to springtime this is going to be our last broadcast before the spring the third week of march um so i guess got a couple things cooking to come out in spring and one of them is return of what i feel is your crazy fanboy beer so we're going to see the bog and tan limes come out this spring so do we have any eta guys or is it kind of just we're just kind of teasing everybody here or for for distribution, you should start to see tan limes around mid March, and for the bog, probably a little bit closer to the end of March and maybe early April, pending a little bit of you know getting delivery dates down with wholesalers and stuff like that. So, and we'll start seeing in a tasting room. I'm imagining close to the same time, Chris. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. We're usually right in line with when uh, when beers are going out with wholesale, especially you know core seasonal brands like that, we're going to be right in line with that. So yeah, we're going to have that back this year on uh, the tasting room. We'll have our, uh, our slushy machine going again this summer. So you'll, we'll be able to get bog slushies, grove mm. slushies, all, all the, uh, all the good stuff that our fans have come to know and love down here. Yeah. It's pretty funny. I, I happened to be at CNBC the day of the first bog release, not on purpose. I was there with another brewery owner who wanted to go down there and said, Hey, I haven't been to Cape May in years. Let's go down there. And we saw the line. I'm like, well, we made a bad life choice coming here that day. It was amazing. <laughs> and uh, to see the amount of people that came down, and it was the bog. It was amazing to see the amount of people that came down from the bog. And it was, uh, it was, it was, it was truly one of the funnier things I see just people just waiting in line, walking away with cases and just, you know, am I going to get it? Am I going to get it? I'm going to get it because it, it really is probably, I think to me, one of your most beloved beers that kind of broke over from the hardcore beer drinker to the guy's wife is like, I love this. And then he came out with crushing it and it just blew everything else away. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the bog, the bog slushy is probably my most asked question in the trade. Like between people of like, Hey, how do I do a, how do I make a bog slushy? I'm like, you, you can make it. I'm like, I'll, I'll have to reach out to the tasting room to see what the, the recipe is, but top it's a recipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the top secret recipe. You might be able to get yeah, top secret. I mean, you might be able to get the Kentucky fried chicken recipe quicker than that from Chris. <laughs> yeah. that so we're getting to the end of the show, and I want to do something a little bit fun here. So I was watching this weather in Texas, and it's craziness. Nobody can go anywhere, they're all stuck in their house. So if you're stuck in a house and say you have some sort of generator, but you can't go anywhere, you have one beer, one album, and one food item. What do you have? Now, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to put a disclaimer here. I know you want to say Cape May beer, and that's great. But let's take, if you didn't have a Cape May beer, and you had to have something there, and something to eat, and a music to listen to to get you through the horror of whatever's going down there that I, I just don't understand, um, what would you have? So, Chris, talk about a beer. All right. So um, my my favorite non Cape May beer, and this was something I, uh, you know, consumed a lot beforehand. And uh, John, you'll you probably won't be surprised by this because we've talked a few times about some of my music taste. Um, but Landshark Lager has always been an old favorite of mine. It's, uh, you know, it's great to drink at the, you know, Jimmy Buffett concert sitting on the beach. So I've, I've always loved that. Um, I I'll tell a little too much information, but uh, on a spring break party, I got a tattoo of Land Shark on my my back shoulder. So I'm forever indebted to the brand. That seems like a good life choice. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, I, and keeping with that theme, I mean, like you know, I, I've said this before. Buffett's my my favorite artist, so his album Banana Wind um, that's one of my favorite. And you know, I I've actually recently gotten back into purchasing records, so you know, I'm slowly building um, that repertoire up. Uh, and then I guess for food, you know, I'm torn. Uh, being a Philly guy, uh, a good pork <laughs> roll and cheese sandwich, 
I can never go wrong with. But a meal that I have at least probably once, one or two, three times a week is anything doused in buffalo sauce, and that's I'm I'm a, I'm a happy as a pig and shit when I do that. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, I got we got Claude Tester. He's in East Texas, and you say it's like being back in the Midwest. I know Claude. Hang tough there, man. I'm watching his TV, and it is it is hard to watch, man. I mean, it's crazy what's going on down there. So, all right, Scott, you're on the hot seat. What's the beer? Okay, I am gonna go. Judgment free zone, I guess. I'm gonna go Miller High Life. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go long neck bottles. I would probably for food. Oh man, I'm I live in Philly, so I know the default answer would be cheese. I'm gonna go with like an Angelo's pizza. Okay, like, that's a good one. Great pizza, and then I'm kind of an old soul with music, so I've, I would go Born to Run, the whole album by Bruce Springsteen. I love Bruce. So that that album never gets old. So that would be my go-to choice. Area Eric Berners telling us he's got the Hamilton soundtrack, and I'm going to talk about that real quick in a minute. <laughs> uh, something over hot by Modern Times, and he loves Chuck Taylor's in the class. So thanks, Eric, for chiming in. Um, and Bert Bert wants to know what about Dad's cheesesteak, Chris? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Dad makes the best cheesesteak in Philadelphia, and I'll, uh, since he jumped on here, I'm going to give him a quick shout out. Happy uh, retirement there to Bert. So he's. He's finally sitting at home drinking all the Cape May beer that he can and, uh, you know, just enjoying the life of uh, being a grandfather now. Uh, good. Congratulations. Um, so on our last show, we had all these hip fish guys on here. We have, you know, Eli from Tonewood and I got Brian on and we got, you know, these guys and the beer was named after fish. We were talking about the Tonewood, crab, Tonewood collaboration. We were talking about, you know, Desert Island kind of stuff. And uh, my music was the Hamilton soundtrack. Let me tell you something. I got so much junk over all that. It's a wonderful <laughs> album. I just am in that kind of thing. And if anybody ever talked to me, they'd be like, I can't believe you're listening to that. I'm addicted to it. It's amazing. John, I, 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 was a, I was a Hamilton hater for a really long time. And then I listened to it and I watched it over 4th of July when it came out on Disney Plus, And I, I was instantly converted. So I'm, I'm a big Hamilton guy now. That's so what I got me to get that. Disney Plus. I got it. Strictly to watch Hamilton. <laughs> Me too. And I walked down to the living room and there were my people and they were just shaking their heads because they won't watch it with me. I, my whole house is against me on it. But anyway, uh, for me, the beer that I would do, it would be Yingling. Yingling for me was the beer that as I was growing up, it was the hip beer. Like now people can go get craft beers. To me to get Yingling, you know, to cross the bridge and get that that Yingling. And I was cool because I had Yingling. And then a little shout out to Pit, Pete's Wicked Ale, which... It's come and gone, but it was something that had kind of changed things. It's pizza. I can eat pizza day and night, as you can tell by my body style. Um, I love pizza. And um, the album, I'm going to go back and, you know, I love Wilco. I love the band Wilco and Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. I can listen to that like I'm listening to it the first time. And my runner-up would be anything by the Beatles. But um, that's a cool answer to the question. So I appreciate that. I'm kind of, kind of thinking out of the box a little bit. And if I had to have a Cape May beer, it would be Cape May IPA every day, all day. Um, it's the beer that I grew up on down here. And uh, that beer would would keep me happy. It's just the right ABV. And I fear I could stay nice and good for a long period of time with that. So thanks for those answers. It's really, really cool. So to wrap up, you guys got some seltzers coming out. You got some new beers coming out. And hopefully we'll see the sun coming out and uh, being able to drink a little bit outside. So, uh, Chris, uh, once again, the tasting room hours and how to order online. Uh, so, hours are 12 to 7 every day. Um, you can go right to the website, gamebrewery.com. Right there on the homepage, you're going to see order beer here. You just click that and we'll walk through, uh, you know, everything that you want to pick out, put in your cart. And then, you know, usually within, if you didn't do a pre-order, we'll have the order ready with you, you know, usually in 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and if you do a pre-order, uh, typically Friday mornings. 12 o'clock, we'll be ready to go for you. And you just pop in, give your name, and there's your beer. Scott, let's talk about the beers you got coming up that's going to be released, not just in New Jersey, but in Delaware and Pennsylvania. Yes. Yeah, so in all three markets, including Delaware and PA, we're going to have Key Lime Corrosion beginning on Monday. And then Cape May Seltzer will go to the trade starting the first week of March, so March 1st. And uh, for me, I like just to say stop by sjbeerscene.com. We have all the local press releases from not just Cape May, but all the beers. And we talk about other things that go with beer, like beer lifestyle. Um, we have some hiking with beer stuff coming out, some homebrew stuff coming out. 
Um, we should be picking up a little bit as news comes in. It's starting to see, starting to feel a little good, guys, that you know we're starting to see things happen. So sjbeerscene.com. And also, I'd like to thank all the great commenters and people that were watching tonight. Great questions, great discussion. Tell people about this. You can ask questions about, you know, the crushing it. I saw like three questions about crushing it. I think that we'll have an announcement about crushing it. Maybe not next show, but the show after. We know that people love the crushing it. So ask your questions. Tell your friends. You can watch this again on Kate May's homepage. And uh, if you have any questions for Chris or Scott, they're both readily available. Send them out there. Look for this on Distro next week. And for uh, for the guys, I'd like to say thank you. And we will talk to you again in a month. So cheers, guys. Have a great night. Thanks, John. Cheers. cheers.